Welcome to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now going to explain question number five from May, from February, March 2018, the latest paper, for which up till this point no mark scheme has come out. Um, I'm doing question five, um, question to do with uh, mensuration, which is like the areas and volumes and <clears throat> And here we have a diagram which shows a solid prism. So solid, it's a prism, meaning it has a constant cross-sectional area all the way through this face. is the same all the way through from the front to the back of the shape. The length of the prism is 15.2 centimeters. And the cross-section that we're talking about, this part that stays the same, is a regular hexagon with side 7 centimeters. So it doesn't actually look like it's regular, but remember, not to scale. Sometimes they do that on purpose to kind of throw you off tracks a bit. So it's a regular hexagon with sides seven centimeters. Okay, so what you could do here is something very important. You've got to calculate first the volume of the prism. To find the volume of a prism, we need the area of the cross section. All right, so you need the area of the cross section, which is the area of this hexagon. And you've got to multiply it by how long it is. Okay, 15.2. That's the volume. That's how much space there is inside the prism. So we need to find the, the area of this face and then multiply it by 15.2. Now, the area of the face can be found in multiple ways. Now, one of the ways which is really useful for a hexagon, a regular hexagon, is this. And when I taught this topic in my class, okay, um, we used these bars of Toblerone chocolates, okay, um, there's one pack, six pack of them that come together as a six, you know, like six equilateral triangles put together, because that's exactly what a regular hexagon can be made into. It can be made if you just join the opposite diagonals, you find that, um, you know, you've got six equilateral triangles, okay? And we can prove they're equilateral, because if this is a regular hexagon, then the exterior angle is 360 divided by six, which is 60. So the interior angle here is 120, and it's cut in half, so that's also 60. That's 60. And as this is, these lines are parallel lines, okay, this is also 60. Okay, so basically you can prove that these lines are parallel, you can prove these angles are 60, okay, and um, you see that helps a lot in, in questions like vectors as well. When we're dealing with vectors, we've got regular hexagon, that's quite a common question that comes up. So that helps a lot. So. This is something that's very useful for us to realize that we have basically six equilateral triangles. So if I want to find the area of the face, the area of the cross section, area of the cross section, I've got six times and I've got, you know, triangles like this, which they're all 60 degrees and all the sides are seven centimeters. So if we use our formula for area of a triangle, the area of a triangle is equal to a half AB sine C. That makes life very easy. So you've got six times a half times seven times seven, seven times seven, which is seven squared, times the sine of the angle between, well, all the angles are 60, it's going to be 60. So that will give us the area of the cross section. Okay? So the area of the cross section is going to be given by, let's get the calculator ready. Notice some of you may have noticed I've got my new calculator here. Okay, this is six times a half times seven squared times sine sixty. Close that last bracket there. And that gives us one hundred twenty seven point three zero five, one hundred twenty seven point three zero five dot 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 continues on. I'm going to keep that value in my calculator actually. Now, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm showing the steps here. Really, I should show the steps here, but I'm doing that so we can see the diagram, okay, in front of our faces. Now, so the volume of the prism, therefore, is going to be given by this area, which is 127.305 dot, 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 times how long it is, which is 15.2. And that gives us the volume of the prism. So we just take that, the calculator and the answer that we really have in there, okay, and... Remove that, and we multiply it by 15.2. So times 15.2, and we get our answer, 
which is 1935.047 dot 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 1935. What was it? Let's go back. Point zero four seven. Point zero four seven. It continues on and on. Okay. So therefore, we need to round this to three significant figures, which will be one nine four zero centimeters cubed. Okay. So that's the volume of the prism. Okay, which was found by finding the area of the cross section, a regular hexagon. You've got six equilateral triangles of side seven centimeters. So it's six times a half times seven squared times sine 60. That gives us the area of the cross section, and you multiply that by 15.2, and you get your answer. That is the volume of the prism. Now, second, it tells us to find the total surface area of the prism. I'm going to, uh, okay, so I'll get that done now. Okay, so for the total surface area of the prism, I'll just copy the picture of the prism down here so we can see it. Um, you've got to find the area of all these surfaces. So you have the area of the hexagon on both sides. So there's two times our, not our answer, but our two times of this, two times the area of the cross section, plus the area of these six rectangles. Each of them are seven times 15.2. Okay, so you could do that. That's one way you can say, all right, so you've got. Um, the area of, you've got, you've got basically 15.2 times 7, and you've got how many of them? Six of them. That's the area of all these rectangles around the outside. Plus, and you've got the area of the um, hexagon, which is 127.305, plus 2 times 127.305. Okay, that's one method of finding the answer, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, so this is called the lateral surface area, the surface area of the, you know, the sides that go along the cross section. And then you've got the cross sectional area times two. It's a solid prism, it says solid. That means it's got, you know, all the faces are there. It's not like hollow or anything like that, where maybe one of the faces might not be there. <clears throat> so you've got 15.2 times seven, that's the area of one rectangle, times six, because there's six of these uh, rectangles plus two times 127.305. This is the area of the, one of the cross sections. You have two of them, so you multiply them by two, the one at the front, the one at the back. Okay, another way of doing this, uh, finding this area here, would be to find the perimeter of the cross section, which is seven times six, which is 42, and then multiply it by 15.2. That's what some people do. That actually gives you the same thing. Okay, so it's basically, it's as if you're just taking this thing and you're laying it out flat. Okay, you, like you cut it along there and you lay it out flat. You see you'll get six equal, one, two, three, four, five, six equal, it's supposed to be equal, six equal rectangles, each of them. Okay, so the total length of them would be seven times six, which is 42. And, you know, the, the width of them would be 15.2. So 42 times 15.2, that will give you the same answer. Okay, that's another way of thinking about finding the area of the, the uh, surface, the lateral surface. And you'll notice, for example, with a cylinder, okay, when, we, when we find the surface area of a cylinder, okay, we're doing the same thing. We're kind of flattening it out. When we find the surface area, that area here is the perimeter of the cross section, which is circle 2 pi r, right? So that's actually what we're doing, 2 pi r times, and the height. That gives us the surface area of a cylinder. Okay, 2 pi r h, 2 pi r h, and plus you add the two circles at the top and the bottom, plus 2 pi r squared. So that's just a side note. Okay, so we're just going to take the value, I'll try and use a value that I already in the calculator. So we've got here, that was if I divide that by 15.2, that will give me the cross-sectional area, which is this. So multiply that by 2. Okay. That's now the area of the face and the back of the, the front and the back of the prism. The face, the hexagon at the back and the front. And then we've got to add to that. It's gone. We've got to add to that 15.2 plus 15.2 times... 7 and times 6. Okay. And that gives us the total surface area, which is 893.001.
893.011, which to three significant figures, doesn't tell us otherwise, you are 893 centimeters squared. Let me just check the volume. Yeah, it didn't mention any round to the nearest this or the nearest that. So you do to three significant figures. <clears throat> now, let me just drink a bit of water. My throat is getting dry after all these videos. Okay, another solid metal prism with volume 500 centimeters cubed is melted and made into six identical spheres. Calculate the radius of each sphere. Okay, so we know that the volume of this prism is 500 centimeters cubed. It's solid, so it's completely contained with material. Okay, so the metal makes up the whole of that prism. Okay, it's melted and it's made into six identical spheres. Let's calculate the radius of each sphere. Well, we know that the total uh, volume of those spheres is 500 centimeters cubed. So we've got six times the volume of one of them is four over three times pi times r cubed. And we know the total volume is 500. Okay, so if we just simplify this, we've got three and the six cancelling. Give you two, you're left with eight pi r cubed equals 500. So r cubed equals 500 over eight pi. And so that will give us an answer. Pretty simple for six months actually. Okay, so you're gonna have the cube root of, do all in one step, cube root of, fraction 500 divided by 8 pi. That gives us 2.7096, 2.7096 dot dot dot. So that's 2.71 centimeters to 3 SF has reached the legal answer. And there we have it. Just make sure volume is 500. There's six of them, six times four over three pi r cubed. That's right, two, eight, eight, that's correct. So I think that must be correct. So here we have our answers for question number five. And thank you for listening and have a nice day.